and the only way for us to move forward is to aspire for that. And then with time, you know, either we become one of the top five or the top ten countries, or we progress from where we are today. So we have a very long-term strategy, and AI is the main component of the 2021 strategy that we have. Now, before talking about AI and getting technical about bias and ethics in China and all of these issues, let me talk to you a little bit about the history of our region. We live in a very interesting region, as you all know. We're not known to have a region that is very stable. We are surrounded by different countries that have different agendas. And this wasn't always the case. The Middle East was exporting science, technology, and innovation to the whole world from the year 813 till the year 1515. So the question is, what happened that led to the decay of that civilization, that led to um, moving from the Golden Ages to the Dark Ages? And the answer is actually an answer of technology. So I've said this before, and I'll say this again, because I've been asking myself this question for the last 27 years. Why am I living in a region that today is backward, that today has the biggest number of failed states, that today has the biggest number of youth unemployment? And when we, I did my research on that, I discovered that there are many factors, but one of the main factors is there was a technology that was invented in the year 1455 that had the promise to uplift any civilization that adopted it. It was a technology that helped spread knowledge, it was a technology that sent content to everyone, and every single civilization on earth embraced it. So Europe embraced it, and Asia embraced it, and every civilization welcomed it. The only civilization that banned it was the Middle East, and that was the Gutenberg Christian Press. <laughs> so everywhere on earth, people would actually get the content to come right to them at the doorstep of their house, at the comfort of their home. They would access any piece of knowledge they want, to some extent, but it was the internet back then. And in our region, there were a few specific religious leaders who said, we don't want to accept this technology because it's going to harm our religion and harm our society. Now we know they were wrong, and um, we went from being the most advanced civilization to the most backward civilization on Earth. So that got us thinking, what is the next technology that holds the same problem? And that technology today is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is a transversal technology. It touches every single sector, and it's going to transform our lives, maybe today, maybe in the next five or 10 years. So we need to be at the cutting edge, we need to do a lot with this technology, and we need to be open. At this current stage, um, what we're seeing is many governments have different opinions about artificial intelligence. Many successful government leaders have no idea what it is. So I think th there's a nice uh, uh, contrast between human stup uh, stupidity and artificial intelligence, <laughs> where government leaders do not have any idea what the technology is or how it's going to impact them, and it is going to impact them. So uh, I, I was with a European minister uh, recently, and uh, we were talking about what the UAE is doing and why artificial intelligence is important. And um, right after I finished my long introduction, he said, thank you very much for that. I'm glad that I'm being lectured by a person the age of my son. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, we don't care about artificial intelligence. We don't care about these robots that you're talking about. We have bigger issues uh, of unemployment. We have bigger issues in our country. And uh, you know, we don't really care about what you're saying. And I asked him, did you ever use any artificial intelligence application or any, did you ever have any interface with artificial intelligence? He said, no. I told him, this is the biggest mistake and the, the worst answer you could say because you can't live without artificial intelligence. So he got shocked. I told him, do you use Google? He said, yes. He said, do you, you know, you, do you have an iPhone? Do you use Siri? He said, yes. He said, you can't live without artificial intelligence because these systems all actually use artificial intelligence. The reason why you have unemployment and you have populism is because of job loss, because of technology. Automation is causing job loss, and artificial intelligence is only going to increase this. So if you don't uh, you know, address the elephant in the room, you're going to have issues in the future. So not everyone gets it, uh, not everyone cares, and I think this is something we need to change. We need to have governments that are proactive rather than reactive, because when governments are reactive, they tend to over-govern, over-regulate, and do things that don't really make sense. So, we need to push them to at least have a seat on the table to understand what's happening and to do something about it. The other thing is, what we're going through right now as a species is we're seeing a lot of things that are happening on the digital end uh, trickle down and touch upon the physical, uh, you know, physical life. 
So what we're seeing with regards to uh, election meddling, what we're seeing with regards to being able to target certain things to specific people to make them do certain things that they won't necessarily want to do, are things that prove that if we do not look at our citizens seriously, they are going to harm us in their real life. So they're going to harm us in our everyday life. Uh, in the UAE, what we've done so far, just quickly for the, the uh, moderation that we have with Jari, we've created councils on the federal and local level. We want to make sure that every single state in the UAE actually benefits from this technology. So every emirate uh, is able to use artificial intelligence to become more competitive, to improve the quality of life. We have a strategy to become the leader in AI in government, specifically. So we want to become the most efficient government. We want to make our citizens happier. And we want to ensure that on a competitiveness standpoint, we are the most competitive government. Governments they tend to spend 80% of their uh, budget on just sustaining operations, so operating expenses, and less than 20% on actual investment and in improving the, the quality of government and systems that one government. We see that artificial intelligence would allow us to increase the spending on investment and to reduce the operating expense because of much wiser decision making within government. So that's one thing that we're looking at. Uh, very closely. We've done a lot of programs to upskill talent. So we have something called the AI uh, camps to train students on AI. Uh, so far, 6,500 students have gone through that program. And in 2019, we know that 15,000 students are going to go through it. We're deploying AI within the curriculum. So every single student in the UAE is going to be exposed to this. Uh, in the primary education, they're going to be exposed to it from an ethics standpoint. We want to make sure that they have a strong ethics compass. And then uh, secondary schools are going to focus on the coding and the hardware side of things, the, the, the hard understanding about artificial intelligence. We also launched a program with Oxford University to teach 100 of our government leaders to become government experts on AI. So they've gone through a one-year course. <coughs> that one-year course uh, taught them the ethical implications, the pros, the cons. Uh, they understood the code. So now they can actually go through the code and understand what that code allows the AI to do and deploy AI within the government agencies. Uh, 94 out of the 100 have graduated. Uh, they graduated <coughs> two days ago. And today, these guys are going to be the champions in our government that this decision. The biggest threat with artificial intelligence and, and government is ignorance. Uh, the ignorance of a government leader that takes a decision wherein he or she does not know what the impact of this technology is going to be. And the challenge there is, yes, you might make a wrong decision today, but you know, even if you are removed from your post, this impact is going to continue happening, whether it's a bias impact, whether it's an impact of certain sensitive data being leaked, so on and so forth. So we want to make sure that ignorance is reduced to a minimum uh, within the UAE. We're also trying to increase AI literacy within our government officials, ministers, uh, under secretaries. Every single person in government needs to know what are the questions they need to ask, what are the things they need to take care of and to think about. So we're doing that as well. We've already deployed AI within healthcare uh, to specifically diagnose tuberculosis. We're a country with 200 nationalities. 90% of our population is foreign born, so we're a very international country. That gives us a problem when it comes to tuberculosis and certain diseases that come in from abroad. So we've used AI to help diagnose tuberculosis. A doctor usually takes six minutes to diagnose the disease, and the accuracy rate is around 62% for the good doctor. With AI, the accuracy is around 95% at this point, and it takes less than one second uh, to diagnose. So it's really helping us make sure that the whole um, diagnosis process is faster. Today, the, the AI system is a support mechanism for the doctor. So a doctor actually gets to see the x-ray, and he gets to see the, the AI results and decides if that person has the diagnosis or he doesn't. And the other thing is we're using AI in infrastructure development. So infrastructure costs billions of dollars per. Uh, the savings we've seen so far are between 20 to 40 percent savings, so it's in the hundreds of millions. And what we're seeing is uh, there's a lot of savings in terms of human life, uh, safety is much better, and resources as well. So the resources that are invested in these systems and the time that it takes uh, is much better uh, compared to uh, a traditional system that does not uh, include AI. And then finally, in oil and gas and you know, in resources, we are deploying AI aggressively, aggressively because. It's very important for us to make sure that we are more efficient, we are more capable, and we are proactive when it comes to energy demand and distribution. Uh, so that's it in terms of the introduction. I think Danny is going to represent you all and ask me questions. If there's any question that you guys want specifically as well, please tell Danny. <laughs> uh, so this is like CNN on your nose. My question is on AI, but the other AI. 
We just developed blockchain solutions We're using somebody who worked in Dubai, Tunisia, in Tunisia, all of Africa, through somebody in Chicago. And this is a very innovative thing, and it's like the world leader in blockchain, Bitcoin, et cetera, et cetera. AI promise arrogance and ignorance. You know, you're talking about the Gutenberg Bible. In America, we have Uber for dogs. We're wasting all these resources on useless apps. Uh, my question is, you as minister, you have a special bully pulpit, which is you're the largest world institutional investor with um, Abu Dhabi Investment Authority and Mubadala. Will you be using those funds to maybe like have Oracle or IBM use um, apps and hire people in these markets like you're doing with the Minister of Possibilities since in America it's the shareholder owner who has the last word, not the management or the companies. I'd be interested to see if you're doing that already and will you be putting this as a requirement for your investments and even board members on these publicly listed companies? I don't think Uber for dogs is necessarily a bad thing. My dogs would love it. Yeah, yeah. If, uh, yeah. If, if people like it, the people want it, why not? I think yeah. there are many of things we think are useless today are things we can't live without. Snapchat, or whatever. You know, I, I wouldn't think that there are reports that someone asked me, said, you know, but today everyone wants it. So, um, to that comment, I disagree, but uh, I respect their opinion. <laughs> With regards to uh, top and wealth funds, at the end of the day, their goal in the top and west funds is to increase the amount of money that the government uh, has and to invest that money in a way that makes sense uh, for the UAE in the future. Uh, today, I don't think there's any vision towards using these platforms to pressure certain companies to do things uh, for us. Um, I think there is, you know, there is a lot of will internally for us to use our money and our resources to do this anyway. So there's no need for us to do that at this point. Um, if there was a change of heart, I would let you know. But at this point, I think they're going to do what they're doing best. I don't want them to lose their money because of the <laughs> yeah. so I'm going to take All the right, last thanks. question All from right, my thanks. partner, Saud, over there.